So I'd like to continue um, speaking to you regarding challenges and strategies in teaching technology education amidst the pandemic. Specifically, myths to avoid about distance learning. So whoever would have guessed that we would find ourselves in a global pandemic and um, really the absolute devastation that it's brought uh, worldwide um, and its impact that it's had on education. Uh, many educators around the world reacted in very different ways and certainly caught off guard due to the nature of a surprise, some better than others. One way in which industrial and technical trainers uh, adapted was to either implement an e-learning in some fashion or expand their distance or e-learning programs already in place, while others hesitated to pull the trigger and performed other workarounds um, or simply did nothing at all. So in retrospect, some of the feedback that we have heard uh, from our customers around the world and some of the reasons instructors may have hesitated to implement an effective e-learning program were largely tied uh, to a fear of the unknown and some myths around them. But the five, five myths I'd like to discuss uh, that intend, uh, that indeed presented challenges in teaching technical education amidst the pandemic and I'd like to include some strategies perhaps to consider uh, as workarounds. So myth number one, we've had e-learning before. The curriculum just wasn't comprehensive enough for us and didn't offer, their, the, didn't offer the specific courses we needed. If you've experienced e-learning whose curriculum was lacking, well, definitely wasn't ours. Um, you should be confident that the curriculum um, uh, because of e-learning solutions uh, should be designed and built by employees who are experts in their field, from engineers, curriculum developers, programmers, and graphic artists, and even field service technicians uh, used in, um, in the quality and, and uh, validation. The curriculum should go through an editing gauntlet uh, that should be meticulously combed by some of the brightest professionals in their line of work. The philosophy behind every e-learning uh, uh, course should be used to engage both students and instructors alike in a highly skilled world uh, where understanding and application integrate seamlessly. Like an actual instructor's lesson plan, the e-learning should include objectives, hands-on skills using virtual trainers, and knowledge checks along the way, as well as pre and post tests. From defining basic industrial terms to designing a control transformer, uh, the curriculum should take learners on a complete educational journey from beginning to end. In a modular program, uh, format, so your program can go as far as you wanna take it and um, be flexible enough to address your particular needs. Each, each lesson should focus on the job ready skills students need to make a positive impact on the industrial workforce. It should include plenty of reviews and assessments along the way to ensure students are grasping what is being taught in the available courses. Just because you have experienced poor results in the past, don't assume that all e-learning is the same. So an advice and strategy, if you're curious about the offerings of an e-learning pl platform, or whether their curriculum matches up to what you're teaching, ask for a no obligation, full access trial to their complete e-learning library. Not just as a sample reel that they have uh, hand selected. This will give you an opportunity, opportunity to take a deep dive into their entire curriculum, leaving you with a much better understanding of their e-learning products. So this takes us on to myth number two. I've taught this course long enough and I can do online industrial training just as well as anyone. We do not doubt any instructor's knowledge level or their ability to teach their class. Um, 
what they should offer is an opportunity to expand a course's depth in a way instructors uh, simply aren't trained to do by using technology. Uh, the e-learning should be comprised of multiple departments working hand in hand to bring the curriculum to life. So the writers and technicians uh, should be able to create content, um, including graphic artists and multimedia teams uh, to curate it with audio, full color graphics, interactive 3D animations, and much more so that we can fully engage the learners. It should, rep it should replicate uh, hands-on uh, skills that students would receive um, uh, the same as they would receive with full-size um, industrial trainers. Uh, the interactive computer-based simulators uh, should replicate real-life equipment uh, with really stunning detail uh, that the students would feel like they're engaged in the actual equipment. Uh, students uh, should be able to perform uh, essentially the same industry-based tasks using virtual equipment, um, again, as they would with the real hardware. The curriculum should also uh, be based on multiple uh, subject matter experts, uh, including those from both education and industry. Uh, this would create a well-rounded curriculum and not only geared to one person's unique experiences. Uh, so while we know that instructors have the subject and teaching knowledge to create e-learning courses, sometimes the biggest roadblock in, uh, revolves around lack of time or funds. Many times we see instructors start on an e-learning e course, but eventually run out of time or resources. Um, the e-learning uh, should allow uh, students to practice um, fairly sophisticated troubleshooting techniques uh, with confidence that they can then translate that uh, to, the work, uh, to the workplace. So an advice and strategy, in order to have a truly interactive uh, learning experience for your students, uh, you'd need programmers, graphic artists uh, to breathe life into the curriculum. So when you're researching online training companies, uh, be sure to ask about the graphics department and what type of platform the e-learning is hosted on. If their interactivity isn't as impressive as their curriculum or vice versa, then that may not be the company for you. So myth number three. I don't think my students would even like that style of learning. So for in experienced instructors that come from non-traditional teaching backgrounds, e-learning might be something that was never even considered. Typically, those instructors that come from a background in in industry uh, tend to rely on methods they experienced in school, which usually composed of little to no e-learning. While there's nothing wrong with that style of teaching, it might not be as beneficial for all types of learners. It's easy to forget that students learn at different paces in a variety of styles. So lecturing might not always be the best way to learn um, for every student. For example, some students possess a spatial learning style and rely on visual cues to help along the way. Others would rather get more hands-on and take a kinesthetic or physical approach to their learning. No matter what style of learner um, composes a classroom, uh, the learning should cover all the bases. For the ling linguistic or the verbal learners, they can utilize both the verbal and written text in the lessons. There should be something for the logical thinker, including complex co calculations, and grouped information for easier retention. Even though learning may be a difficult task for some uh, entering your training programs, the e-learning should take a variety of approaches to make studying and especially retention as simple as possible. One of the biggest gripes about online industrial training is that some will uh, equate it to uh, a click along or what we call a page turner uh, style of learning. This provides no breadth and uh, simply encourages um, clicking through the material, uh, lack of engagement. 
Unfortunately, that style of learning does exist. Uh, when considering providers, make sure their online curriculum offers hands-on interactivity to fully engage the student. Eventually students will be able to return to the classroom. So now is a good time to explore whether the e-learning needed now can expand into physical hands-on skills in the future. So myth number four, I'm just so out of touch with computer technology, I wouldn't know what to do if it stopped working. Like it's preached every day in training centers around the world. I don't know if you don't know a skill, train to learn it. The same can be said about online industrial training. Don't shy away from live in person or hybrid um, factory certified instructor training or train the trainer. Not only will the teachers get individualized course implementation consultation from a factory certified instructor, but it should be ideal for teachers professional development and get them up to speed faster by familiarizing them with the systems and methodologies. We know that strong curriculum paired with excellent instructors equals skilled students ready for the workforce. So by attending a factory certified instructor training program, teachers can feel confident in going back to their schools to deliver the very best training possible. However, uh, despite preparing for everything, issues do arise. So you should look for an excellent support team, a team that includes technical support um, to address uh, technical details, IT, curriculum inquiries, or any general question. So the advice and strategy, well, this one's easy. Simply, simply call up your prospective e-learning provider during a normal business day. Try in the morning and the afternoon and see how the experience is. Remember, if an issue does arise, this will be your main form of contact. If you're having difficulty getting in touch with the right person, then it's not an emergency on their side and you should know what to expect. So myth number five, I can develop my own online material. Uh, this one may have been the most dangerous. If any of you attempted it, uh, you likely soon uh, learn that the amount of time and resources needed to design and develop an effective e-learning program uh, was really pretty formidable. As curriculum uh, developers since 1997, um, computer-based online uh, uh, curriculum development, we've learned a few things along the way. So to start, just as a little bit of insight, um, Amitrol carries about 25% of the workforce, and that's, uh, I think, a data number. Um, but everything from curriculum developers, subject matter experts, um, people with experience in the field, education as well as industry, multimedia programmers, graphic artists, instructional design, editors for quality assurance, desktop publishing for print material, um, photographer, uh, needed for both print and multimedia. And in our case, uh, the president, Mr. Perkins, uh, who's involved with all aspects of the curriculum because it's just simply uh, so critical to our mission. Another insight to this as curriculum developers. Um, so for every one hour of content of e-learning, it takes 200 man hours. Uh, of development that include the staff above from curriculum uh, uh, developers, subject matter experts for the multimedia, the graphics team, and the final uh, quality assurance and editing uh, loops. However, in our case, this is absolutely necessary to ensure the quality and relevance of the curriculum. We want to make sure it's the best. Uh, the multimedia integration uh, starts from a storyboard, goes through the graphics, um, creating the interactions, inserting the voices uh, with the voice over the text, and then finally a review by at least six reviewers.
So the curriculum development uh, should employ, or excuse me, that is employed by, by Amitrol to give you uh, an example, uh, clearly one of a kind. Uh, we use a lot of uh, different techniques um, to create that, uh, that interaction. This is what you should, you should look for because we want to fully engage the, the learner. So different uh, techniques that include uh, stunning graphics, uh, any kind of interaction, everything from a, a targeted interaction to a full virtual uh, uh, simulation, 3D simulation, video, um, text presented in a, in a very readable um, uh, format, as well as the voiceovers. So why is all this important uh, to look for in an e-learning? Uh, it's all about the retention. So some of the reason these variety of techniques and not just one, not just the page turners as we uh, mentioned, uh, but these are all uh, used uh, in concert to improve the student retention and an efficiency of learning. Um, as you may have seen uh, before, um, from a passive learning to an active learning, the more that you engage uh, a student, um, the more they're going to uh, recall. And as an example to um, Amitrol, the breadth of courses that we cover around technical education range everything from industry 4.0, from fundamentals up to higher end automation industrial networks, as well as other technologies around electrical fluid power, green technology, lean manufacturing, machining, manufacturing processes, materials, uh, mechanical, instrumentation and process control, quality assurance, safety, thermal, uh, as well as workplace effectiveness. So in summary, some things uh, to consider when implementing an effective e-learning course uh, or software uh, should include um, an e-learning uh, provider and library with the breadth and depth of course content, problem solving and troubleshooting skills, modular credit and blended delivery opportunities, uh, designed in concert with industry to ensure the relevance, easily tailored courses uh, where you can mix and match um, and create customized courses. Uh, Self-contained, doesn't require any additional course material. It can be used in conjunction with equipment or virtual. And integration uh, capable via other LMS platforms uh, such as Moodle or Blackboard. So I wanna again, thank you for your time this afternoon. Uh, wish you uh, a good day and a good rest of the conference. Thank you.